Hello, my fellow Bereans. It's been a while, and it's hard to even know where to start. But I'll start by saying I've been going through the process of becoming a kidney donor. And so I'll talk about that at the end of the video, so that if you're here because I have this new prayer Bible, then you don't have to worry about all those details. But that's what's been going on in my life, getting tested and all of that. But that is the reason why I created this little Bible, so that when I'm in the hospital, I have something to use. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know I have this one. The thing about this is that I did put in it the great controversy, and I put a place for prayer requests, and really the part on dealing with different issues is just at the top here, which are the fruit of the spirits. And I wanted to be able to really key into issues that I might be having while I'm in the hospital. And I did create one of these Bible guides. And so in this one, you'll notice it has love, joy, or sadness, peace, long suffering. Up here at the top, I have who God is and then who I am in Christ. So with this one, the who I am in Christ, the reason I wanted that on there as a separate thing, those are going to be walking through like I am loved. You can see those out there online, different write-ups on that. I don't know if I'll have time to give you a link, but maybe I'll do another video later where, where I show which verses I chose to put in here. But that's what that one is, just to recognize who I am in Christ. Then anger or fighting, courage, being steadfast or having to do with fear versus that have to do with diligence or laziness versus that have to do with health versus that have to do with submission or complaining or acceptance because I find often when I'm complaining about something it's actually a lack of submission on my part to whatever God has brought into my life and then thankfulness and praise to purpose in our hearts warnings by God or sin. And then these are different prayers of the Bible or personal prayers. This is salvation, faith, grace, just kind of all about our faith. And then we have over here, gentleness, goodness, meekness, which I decided to put humility and pride with that one. And then temperance or self-control. So how this works is you can go to your Google search and say, what does the Bible say about love or joy? or sadness, or peace, or long-suffering, or patience. You can also write, well, I use the KJV translation, so what I'll do is write like peace, KJV, and then it will usually bring me to a site that has all kinds of verses that contain that word. I use that all the time. And so, so then as you go through that list, you read those verses, decide if it matches it, if it's something you actually want to keep in your Bible or not. You you think that that will be helpful, and then you put it in there. I tend to put more in there than I probably should, and then as I'm reading through them, they, I find that they're not as helpful. So I've put a lot of verses in here that I might go back and take out, and then I'll show you how this works. So say I'm wanting to look for a verse on patience or long-suffering is how it's worded in the King James Version. You would come down, find a tab, open it up, and there are verses on there. And so here at the top, I have a blue. I have a blue and then I also have a red. This is on the character of God. And so on this, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So to me, this is patience. And then it's also the character of God that he is willing to strengthen us. And so then you see there's also more than one blue. So anytime you see blue, it might not be that subject. So something you can do is write beside it, patience. Or you can also do something. So then another thing I think I'm going to do more of is writing the, the chapter and verse number here. Just so then you find it. But... You can do so many things. So this one is thankfulness. And then I have this giving him thanks circled. And that is something different. I was using crayons in my life application prayer Bible. And I wasn't finding that much of a difference between the dark blue and the lighter blue. And between the dark green and the lighter green. So I bought some pens. And they are these ones here. I'll leave a link in that pinned comment to these. They're micro tips. I don't like them as well as the Sakura microns that I normally use in my Bibles, but I did like the fact that, that the colors seem a bit more distinct than I was having with my colored pencils. So there's dark green, light green, dark blue, light blue. So 
just to show you like Galatians 5 22 where you have the, all those fruits of the Spirit there isn't actually a dark green in this one these are both the light green but you can see the light blue and the dark blue that there is a definite difference between those so on this one here with prayers of the bible i'll just show you an example of that i haven't marked all of them yet we have here verse 24 through 25 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen so i have that as a prayer there's another Another one that's somewhere in Deuteronomy or Numbers where it says may the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you it's um, Moses says it to the people and so I'd want that in there there's I think there's one in Ephesians so just all those prayers that are found people praying there's a prayer of Jabez I think it's in first Chronicles where that could be a prayer of the Bible so that's that's what I'm doing with that section. So on this sheet, if you're new to my channel, what I do is I cut this paper to size and I run a glue stick along the edge and then I just stick it in there and close the book. And I do have a video on that process, so I'll try and remember to also link that in the pinned comments. So if you want this insert, go ahead and send me an email to request this. And it's cut down to a Bible this size. This Bible, I believe, is four by six. It's in the King James. I found a few with this style, so I will put some links in the pinned comments. So, so now about the reason why I felt the need to create this Bible, and that is because I'm going to be a kidney donor. And so my dad back in 2000, hmm, Back in the early 2000s, might have been 2006, he did a colonoscopy. And you know, the day before you have a colonoscopy, you're told to drink this liquid and it's going to clean your system out. And the one that they gave him was, I guess, a new drug on the market. And it was one you had to have a prescription for. And two years later, he's doing his normal blood workup. And they discover that his kidney function has dropped significantly. We, I think it was around 28%. And they discovered throughout the country, people who had taken this drug, that it crystallized their kidneys is the way that it was worded. I don't know crystallizing what that means exactly. But he lost kidney function. And so at that time, I looked into being a kidney donor. But at 28%, he was still pretty good. So we went through the process, found out I was a match, but everything was just on hold because once you get a kidney, you have to take anti-rejection meds so your body doesn't reject it. And those have very strong side effects. I'll go into that at the end. And also can cause cancer. So it was good to just keep going. And he was holding really well at 18% for quite a while. And then it felt like suddenly to me, they probably knew it was dropping. But this past fall of 2023, found out that his numbers had gone down to 8%. Um, and I mentioned at that time about being a donor, but at that time he decided he would like to do a deceased donor because I think he didn't want to interrupt anybody's life. But... You do find out things when you use a deceased kidney donor. The kidneys last about half as long. And also, something we just found out, we didn't realize at the time, something we just found out at our pre-op appointment, is that when you get a deceased donor's kidney, it takes a while for the kidney to get started again. And he would have had to continue dialysis for two more weeks waiting for the kidney to wake up. Whereas using mine, it should start working immediately, like right when they place it into him. And so in December, so he was thinking he was just going to get a, get a deceased donor kidney. And my sisters and I convinced him that, that he should use a living donor's kidney and that it should be ours because we're a better match for him because we're his daughters 
And so my sisters and I have two sisters. We all three went through the testing process together. And for whatever reason, mine finished way far ahead of theirs. And I think it's because way back when I had already started checking to see if I was a match. So the transplant center already knew that information. And I think also because I'm in the same state as him. So I was able to use their labs and they got the results quicker. I'm not sure, but I am months ahead of them. So my dad would be doing dialysis for several more months if they, if anyone else did it other than me. Where we are at the transplant center, they reserve two adjoining rooms and they'll take the kidney out of me and they'll place it into him and they're gonna actually leave his two original kidneys there and it goes way down here on the body, very low and I don't understand how there's room in the body down there for a kidney. It just seems like you would notice it. <laughs> but that's what they do. They'll make a few cuts on the side of my abdomen to put a camera in and then also to put the gas in to expand the area around the kidney. And then they'll make a uh, slit on the side of my lower abdomen and that's where the doctor will reach in, get the kidney, and they'll bring it over to my dad who's in the next room. Now, just so you know, this is a very safe procedure. It's actually lower risk than when you have a C-section. I guess some people I've talked to, their nerves are about being put under anesthesia that you don't wake up. For whatever reason, I don't have that nerve at all. The only thing I've been wondering about is the pain, how bad it's gonna be. And they do have to cut nerves, so some people feel a lot of pain and some people, they're back to work in a few days. I guess I'm just gonna see what happens. I have some ways that I'm hoping I'll be able to deal with the pain and we'll see what happens. So that is what I'm doing. So my surgery date is Tuesday, February 20th. So it's this next Tuesday coming up. I'm gonna try and release this video as soon as possible. So then if people are interested in this sheet, email me for it. One thing, don't worry about emailing me during this time because the email box that you email is only for this channel. So that means if I haven't seen it, it will just sit in my inbox. And then when I'm back to having time to send it, then I will. But I would like to go ahead and edit this video and send it out to all of you so then you can get this. And then also there are some prayer requests related to this. And so I'm praying that one of the issues with the medicine that my dad's going to be on is that one out of four people develop tremors because the medicine crosses the blood-brain barrier. So I am praying that that does not happen to him, that he's one of the lucky ones that does not have the tremors. Of course, there is the risk for cancer, so I'm praying about that. I'm praying that between now and the time of our surgery that neither of us get sick because if we get sick, we get on a hold list and it's just very much been an emotional roller coaster up and down to get to, to this time as far as waiting for test results, making sure my kidneys are strong enough. So I just want to get this and get this done with. So I'm praying that neither of us are sick. My daughters are out of state staying with my sister so that I can have that recovery time. They're very they're having the time of their life right now. And so, but I am praying for them to be safe and happy and for it to be an enjoyable time with my sister. So if there's anything else I've forgotten, I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, we could use your prayers. And then if you, as I said before, if you request an insert, just remember there might be a little delay. Even this week, it was like four or five days before I got back to some people. So I apologize for that. It's just been busy. It's just been overwhelming with everything, testing, and then taking care of my girls, getting them to the airport, all those kind of things. Oh, I'll tell you a little story that happened. It was so sweet. On the airplane, they flew Delta. My parents flew them Delta to go see my sister. And the stewardesses asked my daughters why they were traveling, you know, just making small talk. And they told them why they were going, that I was giving a kidney. And so the stewardesses were just so encouraging to my daughters about, you know, your mom's a hero. And they gave them these snack bags of a whole assortment of snacks. And I just thought that was so sweet that they did that for them. Oldest 
is 14 and she said, I don't know if that's what they do for all the kids that are traveling alone, but she felt like she was being treated very special because of that. So that was nice for them. So anyways, that's all. So until next time, be well and God bless.